себя.
But I want to thank him this morning. I want to thank you, thank you for being so good to me. You were my food when I was hungry. You were my water. Somebody clap your hand and praise him. Come on, anybody. 
Somebody excited just to be back in the Lord's presence. One more time. Come on, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Lift your hands. Open your mouth. And tell the Lord, have your way today. Hey, I want to thank you. Thank you, Lord, for being so good to me. Amen. Lord, we just, we just want to thank you. Yes, I was talking to a college mate of mine this week, and he told me that his gait, his walk, was not like it used to be. But he said, he thanked the Lord anyway. As I know that all of us should have a reason to thank the Lord. Yes, indeed. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Most precious and thou art God, maker and creator of all things. We come this morning to praise and worship you. I'm asking right now, Lord, for you to allow your Holy Spirit to dwell in this sanctuary and to move within us as we lift up your holy and righteous name and that everything that is said and done will be done to magnify you. I ask these and all things in the precious name of your only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. And the church says, Amen. We now have our opening hymn.
reading today come from 2 Corinthians 12th chapter. We'll be reading the 9th and the 10th verses. And it reads, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Again, 2 Corinthians 12, chapter 9 to 10th verses. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers and doers of his word. Y'all may be seated. We now have an announcement. Offertory slide, offering slide. You know, we, we talk about offering and it should be a giving. Those who study the word of God and those who have confessed the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior know that, should know, that God is true to his word. And he says, if you give, he will give back to you. So all that's in here and all that have confessed him should be given. And y'all have seen the different ways that you can give. We now have our announcement. Y'all can read that, but I will announce that one, speak on that one, June the 21st through the 23rd. We have our virtual vacation Bible school. Ms. Choice has asked some, I think it's a sign-in sheet in the back up there. But we would like as many as possible to join in on our vacation Bible school. And again, it's June the 21st through the 23rd. It is virtual from 7 p.m. to 8.15. I think this slide is about our 250th anniversary. And I'm gonna have on um, Deacon Douglas Brown to come up. Good morning, New Bethlehem. Give honor to God who is the head of my life our pastor and our visitors and friends that is here. Just afternoon after church, I'll read really have a meeting with some fundraising to a committee, and I'd like for all of the deacons and who is a part of it to attend. You know our meeting's gonna be that long. And then again, I'd like to keep stressing to everyone to continue doing what they're doing as uh, far as making the $300 payment for the ladies and 500 for the uh, men, if not more. Not saying that we are being greedy, but there's some that say that they will pay more. So that's one of the reasons why I'm saying that. And I would like to thank each and every one of y'all who have participated and continue on please thank you very much and you and remember this is our our new Bethlehem once we pay it out for it that's ours all right okay y- hey, y'all talking slow now <laughs> all right all right God God bless y'all Amen. Amen. Let's
let's um, church, let's govern ourselves accordingly. Accordingly, because I know some have taken on the challenge from the pastor on doubling those amounts from 300 to 60 and from 500 to 1,000. And I remember some hands went up that day. And I remember some ladies saying, um, you're, just do, you're just taking the men up? I mean, what about the ladies? So let's not forget that. Um, before we move to the sick and shut in, we do, because this is announcement time, we have a Miss Melissa Trey Middleton. Of course, I'm not running for Charleston County Council District 8 to address. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. I believe, oh, first of all, giving honor to God who is first in my life and to one of my dear friends and minister in Christ, uh, Pastor William. We served together in the Sea Islands Ministerial Alliance. Most of you uh, who don't know me, I am Pastor Millicent Trey I. Middleton. A lot of people on the island know me as Miss Sunshine. I don't think most people knew I had a other name other than Sunshine up until like maybe five years ago. I married into the Sea Islands 23 years ago to Taven Middleton, the son of Lillian and Isaiah Middleton. But most of you learned to know and recognize me as the daughter of the late great Hermina B. Trei, where the nursing home was built after. Years ago, 50 plus years ago, my mother, she fought with the civil rights activists and Esau Jenkins, September Clark, and all those who were trying to make a change, even for the nurses' strike. She was the face of the 1199B nurses strike back in 1969. The same talk, the same fight that she fought and others on this great island. Uh, my cousin Johnson, Elder Johnson, and everybody who is here in their prospective places, we've been having this conversation for 50 plus years and we're still having the same conversation. The rural area has been forgotten for decades from James Island all the way to Eddie Stowe, which is why I am running. I've been an activist in this region for six years, bringing people back out to the high school before they gentrified the high school, asking everybody to get involved, which is why I joined the Ministerial Alliance to team up with the pastors to try to stop them from gentrifying the school. Highway infrastructure, no public transportation for people to get on and off the island so that they can live a better life. There's a whole list of things that's been go that has not been going on that should be going on. But a vote for me on Tuesday will ensure that at least the conversation would happen. I thank you and I appreciate you for the time to speak to you this morning, amen. Again, saints, govern yourself accordingly. Yes. We'll now have the sick and shut in along with the prayer list. Now when you look and, and see these names that are posted, please continue to reach out to these folks, some of these people is just homebound and, you know, a call just to say hi means a lot sometimes. So please re um, do reach out to them. And it don't take everybody, you know, just one or two people calling me makes, makes a difference. On our prayer list here, um, we see uh, Brother Tyrese Hayward, that's the son of Deacon George Hayward and Sister Regina Hayward, 
we pray for him who was in a got his leg broken in a few places and so just lift him up at this time and pray for a full recovery for him um, brother Jalen Gibbs who is Quetta grandson sister Deborah Gibbs Quetta Gibbs he is still in the hospital please pray for him Brother Jack Fall, that's, that's my brother-in-law. I mean, he graduated from St. John's High School. I think some in here, uh, maybe a lot in here might know Jack. Uh, he is battling his illnesses. He, he lives in Charlotte. He's my sister's husband. And uh, so pray for him. And Brother Samuel Dickerson, that's his brother, Bernadette and Don Dickerson. I think he lives maybe in, in New York, if I'm not mistaken but not doing well in need for it. So so continue to pray and uplift those those who are sick, shut in, and on the prayer list. And now we're down to uh, back to our choir where they will be singing uh, A and B selection. And after the A and B selection, next word that you will hear will be coming from our pastor, the Reverend Zachary Williams. Oh, 
This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Well, we are here this morning uh, to give glory, honor, and praise unto our Lord and Savior. It was a little warm in here, but I had them crank up the air conditioner. I wanted to cool you off a little bit. I, I saw a lot of fans going on. It, it, it reminded me of being back in some of the little small churches down in the middle of nowhere. They didn't have no air. Fan didn't work. Windows been painted closed, and all you can do was fan. But we are here in the edifice where the Lord has made a great place for us to worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Father, Father, once more and again, Lord, I just come saying thank you. Lord, now I come asking that you anoint me from the top of my head down to the sole of my feet. Speak to me and speak through me as I expound on your word, that I will make it clear, make it plain to these, your people, that they may apply it to their lives, knowing that you still sit high and look low. This we ask your son, Jesus' name, amen. This morning's scripture is very familiar. Most of it can quote it by heart, the 23rd Psalm. In the King James Version, it reads, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepareth the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. You may be seated. I know we normally use that text at funerals and uh, various others, but you know, it, it goes a lot deeper than just to a funeral. So we're gonna look at the 23rd number of Psalm and, and see how it applies to our lives. And for a thought, for a subject, he gives us more than we deserve. Uh, here in, in this little pericope, Jesus shows time and time again that he would and could provide for those who follow him. Just as the shepherd provided for the sheep, so does Jesus provide for his followers. Yeah. Because we are the sheep of his pasture. Yeah. See, and, and he explains it so well in this 23 23rd number of Psalms. In there, at this time when David is writing this, he has become an old man and, and he had seen many tragedies and disappointments. But he also had come to know God, a good shepherd who gives his children more than they deserve. Jesus is our good shepherd. When we take a look at the things that he has done for us, we know he gives us our provisions. Yeah. He takes care of all our needs. He gives us peace and rest in during our weary times when we don't know where to get rest from and our journey is too much. He gives us protection and we have safety from all that, that is going on and from all our enemies. He has providence. In other words, he guides us in the time of confusion. When we don't know which way to go, we got Jesus right there. But then so he's always present. See, we have a friend when there is no one else around. We have a friend during our loneliest time. All we got to do is call on him. But then also he gives us paradise. 
because in his word says that you have a home waiting for you that was not built with hands. See, Jesus has been there. And while David was looking at this 23rd Psalm on how God, good God, has been to him, he was letting us know that no matter how bad things look, the shepherd will always be there to take care of us. But then he goes on and he says that, that now he walks through this valley. He says, God allows us time in the valley. But David paints a picture in the first four verses uh, of, the, of the shepherd with his sheep as describing a relationship between God and us. See, and, and everything makes sense in our understanding of the shepherds leading his flock to green pasture and calm waters. But then we get to verse 4. See, in verse 1, he says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Say, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still water. He restoreth my soul. And he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. But then come to verse 4. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Look, now, now all of a sudden now it changes about the God taking care of us. So now I'm walking through this valley of the shadow of death, through those dangerous situations where the sheep life is in danger unless the shepherd is alert and attentive to take care of all their needs. But the question is, but why would the sheep be going through such a place? Well, because, not because he strayed, not because he went off and sinned, not because there was some pointed destination that the sheep was trying to get to, but the shepherd was trying to protect them and take them to higher ground. Take them to a place where they would be protected. You know, every now and then, the Lord is going to let you go through your valley. He, you know, and, and he's going to be there with you. See, the connection between verse 3 and 4 where he says, He restoreth my soul and lead me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Then he said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. He says, look, th th this is a righteousness movement of God leading the sheep from one location to another. You didn't do anything other than to be led by the shepherd to a place where you could have peace in the valley. But yet, to, in order to get to where you got to go, or where the Lord wants you to go, says that you're going to have to go through this valley of the shadow of death. In other words, you're going to have to go through your trials and your own tribulations. So even though you're walking through the valley of shadow of death, I, you, you won't fear, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. God is going to be there with you. Jesus is going to walk with you, but you're going to have to go through that valley. Yeah. See, see, so, now the question, why, why have a God shepherd who says they lay down his life for his sheep, lead the lamb into the valley filled with danger, threats, death? The only possible answer is to get you to someplace better. One of the things that we, we, if you don't go through your trial, if you don't go through your tribulation, we don't, you don't go through that which the Lord has given you, you will not be strength, have the strength to take on the things that the Lord is doing for you. Our trials and our tribulation strengthen us to move forward. Yeah. And, and he said, look, uh, you know, yeah, I know you, you don't like to go through them. But you, if you know that you got somebody that's going to be there with you, then you can make it to the other side. Yeah. So, yeah. See, see the, the shepherd, Jesus knows from past, or in this case, David knew from past experience that the predators, the coyotes, the bears, and the wolves and cougars were all there waiting to, to attack the sheep as he took them through the valley. That, that, uh, that they would hide in the cliffs so from a vantage point that they could prey on the flock. Everybody that you come in contact, that you might think is your friend, they are there not to pray for you, but to pray on you. David is letting you know that they might be hiding in the shadows, just waiting for a time when they can attack. 
It's not that they want what you got. They just don't want you to have what it is that is laid out for you. See, see, th th in this 23rd number of Psalm, he's letting you know that there might be rock slides and mud and, and natural disasters that would destroy or injure the sheep. But in spite of all the hazards, he would always be there, be there with you. This is still the best way to take his flock to higher ground. See, sometimes he got to take you through some stuff to get you to where he wants you to be. A lot of us are stuck in the same place that we've been most of our lives because we have not gotten up and moved forward because we were afraid of that valley. But yet David said, yea, though I walk through that valley of the shadow of death, I'm not going to be afraid. I will fear no evil. I don't have to fear because I know that my God is with me. So he said, for thou art with me. Not only are you with me, but you got your rod and your staff that comforts me. Well, why does the rod and the staff comfort me in a time when all of a sudden I go to the doctor and the doctor says, well, you got cancer. Well, yeah, you might say I have cancer, but I got a God that's in the valley with me. I, you might say I'm not going to make it, but I got a God that says that I got my staff, that when you fall down as the sheep would stray away, I, it's got a hook on one side of it that he can hook it and he can pull them on back to where they need to be. But he says that I'm going to protect you because it's got an arm on the end of this thing where it will be able to stave off the things that are coming up against you. See, you need to know that no matter how hard things might get, God is still going to be there with you. See, see when, 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 when your things get tight and you, you don't know what to do and, and you, you're getting ready to leave one job and take on another and, and there are unknowns about you. See, he said, even though you may not know what's in front of you, if you just lean and depend on me, I'll be able to take you on through. See, then when, you, when, you, when, when, when the shepherd has an appointment for you, he says that even though time may become hard, you, your path might become dreary, you might have darkness and don't know how to get there, you don't know what's at the end of the tunnel because you cannot see a light, but do you know that the Lord God has told you that you're on a righteous mission? So, and if you're under the righteousness of God, and you're being led through that valley by the God that has led us from time to time, then everything going to be all right. See, he says you can rest assured that he's taking you to a higher ground where the sun is warm, the grass is green. He says that there's a little water in the valley. You know, you're the sheep, and he's trying to take you somewhere. But yet, sometimes it, the sheep is afraid of water that is moving. That's why he said, I got to take you to some steel water. Because as long as the water is troubled, the sheep will not drink. So he said, I got to take you to some steel water. But while you're getting there, I want you to understand that while you're on this path, there's going to be something better. Psalms 84 and 11 says, no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. See, you need to know that even though there's something going on. You know, when I got here almost six years ago, we, we took and put in uh, the, the theme for the church and the scripture for the church. And we said that we were going to have to press towards the mark. We haven't changed that because we are still pressing towards the mark. But as we are pressing, we know that we've got God on our side. Because God says that he's not going to withhold any good thing from us that walk uprightly. And Paul put it this way. He said, we know that for those who love God, all things work together for the good. For those who are called according to his purpose. See, if you've been called by God, you can go through the, the, the valley of the shadow of death. The valley isn't good, but the shepherd is better. He knows the way. 
See, when, when you're following the shepherd, David understood. He said, look, I want to tell you how to be fearless in, advers in adversity. He tells us that even though the valley of the shadow of death, don't fear the danger. Don't worry about what's going on. When you come into your faces of crisis, you need to just hold on to God's unchanging hand. He said, don't, you know, how do you fight fear when you don't know what's going to happen next? And your imagination is running over time. That's what gets most of us in trouble. We don't know what's in front of us. But our imagination starts taking us to places where we don't need to go because we don't know what it is. But so David tells us to, to, to have confidence in those things that are before you. I'm not going to get too deep for you because I don't want to lose you. But David says that you need to have confidence when you come into that place of danger. He said, the first thing you need to know is that you're staying in the presence of God. When you are going through your trials and your tribulation, you are not alone. David said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because you're with me. See, he knew that God was with him. Not only was God with him, he said, look, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. For he speaks of God's nearness. In other words, no matter how bad things are, God is right there near you. He said, I got him by my side. I'm in his presence. See, when you step off into the valley and it's so dark and you can't even see the path ahead of you and you just possible that, that there's something in the way, there's a predator or an enemy, your mind started going out. You start looking around. That's why Paul said every now and then you need to renew your mind. See, the enemy is laying in wait for you, but the shepherd has something. He's waiting for you right there. See, see, sometimes if we, and I got to digress back. One of the things we have to understand is that we have the, pure, the feeling, and not only the feeling, but we have that inner man within us. We have the Holy Spirit within us. And it says that the Holy Spirit is going to lead God, direct, and protect us. So why are we fearing that which we cannot see when the one that is going to be there already in us knows what it is that's in front of us? So He's going to lead us to where we need to go. So He's going to be with you. So, but some of us, we turn to drugs, we start to drinking, we find some other substitute that, that, that will help us to get past those things that are going on. But the truth is, is all you need is your shepherd, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Hebrews 13, chapter five, verse 5 says, he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can have confidence and say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what I cannot see. I will not fear what man can do to me. There is no valley, no matter how dark that you might think it is, I can always go through it. Why? Because he says, I'll never leave you. See, and because I have that protection, I can go through all my trials and my tribulations. At night when it seems like I have nobody around, I got a friend that's right there with me. I got somebody to talk to. He's not only that, but he says you got the power of God with you. See, the shepherd's rod is a two-foot club made of oak with a round head was Wheel it together in a knot from a tree, and it was a sharp bit with a metal point on the end of it. That's why it said one end was to pull the sheep, and the other one was to take and defend him. So you know that you got somebody to take care of you. Because the word of God says that the greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Why are you fearing what's going on? See, and then the last thing he says, look, I'm going to lead you. See, with the staff, he comforts me. He said, well, I, I, I want you to know that, 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 that stick that he got, that hook on the end of it, it's the shepherd that will use it to guide the sheep so that they won't stray away. See, when we get ourselves in trouble, 
And, and, and we get all of our complaints upon us. The weight is so heavy that we don't know what to do, but the shepherd says that I'm going to pull you out of your, where you are and I'm going to put you back on the straight and narrow path. I'm going to comfort you. I'm going to take you where it is. But the one thing that I want you to understand you got to do is that you got to quit depending on yourself and others and be like David. See, if you look at David, he says, the Lord is my shepherd. See, he made it personal. He said, I shall not want. See, you can't ask somebody else about what they want. You need to know that I need to let the Lord know what I want. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in the green pastures. See, when my pastor look like it's dried up and I don't know what, which way to go, he said, I'm going to give you a green pasture. And he said, then I'm going to, he said, he leadeth me beside the still water. I am his sheep, and he knows that when the water is troubled, that I'm not going to drink. So he led me to the still water. So while I can go into the pasture, into that green pasture, I can drink from the water because it's not trouble. And when my soul feels like it's all torn up and I don't know how to get past my trouble, he said, he restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. See, you got to make it personal. Say, yea, though I walk through the valley, I don't know what somebody else's valley is, but I know what my valley is. And it might have the shadow of death, but I will fear no evil. You got to get into a personal relationship with the master. You got to start using some pronouns. Told you, you need to talk to God about what it is. See, for thou art with me. If you know that God with you, you can go through almost anything. I'm not going to say you're not going to have trials. You're not going to have tribulation. Your heart's not going to hurt that there are going to be things in your life that you may not like, but you need to know that I will survive. Why I will survive? Because I will fear no evil. Because the rod and my staff is going to comfort me in my time of trouble. When I feel like everything is going wrong, I always know that I can still go into my secret closet and talk to the master about what's happening in my life. He says that he prepares the table before me in the presence of my enemy. I might have enemies on each side, but one of the things I have learned to deal with is that I got grace on one side, I got mercy on the other side, and because I got grace and because I got mercy, I know that my enemies will not be able to overcome me because he says that he's going to anoint my head with oil. He's going to protect me. I look back and I think about how he did Aaron. He poured oil on top of his head. It ran down his beard, down to the sole of his feet. He covered him with the oil. See, you need to go and find a little anointing oil for yourself. You need to allow God to anoint you from on high. He needs to be able to touch you, to show you the way you need to go. Because he says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Because once I know what it is that I want, I will go head on and dwell in the house of the Lord forever. See, and when it went back to the Old Testament, we were walking around in the Old Testament and we didn't know what God was talking about or what was going on in that Old Testament. But, you know, one of the things that, that, that Jehovah Jireh, See, we need to know that we got a Lord that provides. Just like in the Old Testament, he says that he was Jehovah Shalom, the Lord who gives peace. If you want peace, you need to find a shepherd. If you find a shepherd, you're going to find Jesus Christ. If you find Jehovah Shalom, you're going to find Jesus the Christ. If you find Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals, when you're sick and you don't know where to go to get your healing, you need to find Jesus. You need to call on the name of Jesus. You, Even though you might be in your valley, you might feel at your lowest point, know that you got a God that will pick you up. 
off. He will dust you off. He will turn you around. He will put your feet back on a solid foundation and lead you into the path of righteousness. See, once you have the righteousness of God, you can go down on your knees, talk to the master, tell him what's going on. See, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He said, look, I'm going to give you mine. And I'm going to give him to you so that you can have peace in the time of trouble. I'm going to give you one that I'm going to send him on up to give up his life. Because you can't get to where I want you to go all by yourself. He got to die on the cross. He got to be spread wide. And then when he bleeds for you, he said, look, I got to send him on down that road. I got to let him take him from town to town, from hall to hall. Because by his stripes, you are healed. You can't get healed if you don't know Jesus. He has already paid the price. Salvation is free to you, but it was not free. Jesus had to give up his life. And when he gave up his life, he gave it up that you could have peace in all of your troubles, your storms, and everything that's going on. You could have salvation. And he says that I've already prepared a place for you, but when you finish up on this side, I got you a house that was not made with hand. But when I get you on over to the other side, when you give up the ghost on this side, I'm going to send you on a street that is paved with grove. That I'll sum down that's going to miss you down on this side, but knowing that everything going to be all right on the other side, because he says that, that there's a river up there, and on the other side of that river is a tree for the healing of a whole nation and once you get to there you're going to be made whole again you can go back and do the things that you could never do before but one thing about it when you cry say I'll wipe away the tears from your eyes you got everything you need in Jesus Christ he gives us more than we deserve he allows us to have more than what we ever should have had because if the truth be known the wages of sin is still death, but the gift of God is eternal life. He gives us more, more, and more than we could ever deserve. That's why it says you need to learn how to lean and depend on Jesus. Amen. Oh, say God is, God is. My everything, God is. Oh, He's my joy. He's my hope. Oh, He's my rock. In a weary land, over oh, shelter in a time of storm. God is. God is my everything, my heaven. And if you say everything, come on, clap your hand. Oh, say God is. God is. Oh, he's my joy. He's my hope.
my everything. That's what he is to me. My everything. My everything. That's what he is to me. He is my shepherd that I shall not want. He feeds me. He clothes me. My everything. My everything. That's what he is to me. Wonder can I get a witness? Wonder can I get a witness? He is my mother. When he ain't a mother, he is my father. When I need a father, he is my best friend. Doctor in the sick room, lawyer in the courtroom. Ah, my everything, my everything. That's what he is to me. That's what he is to me. Everybody clap your hands. God, he's your everything. You can call on one person and he will be right there. My everything. My everything. My everything. That's what he is to me. That's why I praise him. That's why I worship him. That's why I magnify him. That's why I glorify him.
Somebody think of for his grace. Think of for his mercy. God is my own. Can we just sit that right there? Come on, let's sing it all together. Say, God is my all. Say, God is, God is my yeah. and all. I'm a living witness. He can be anything you need him to be on this morning. Oh, lift your voice and say, God is, God is. He's a company keeper. When you cry your tears at night, lift your voice and say, God is, God is my all. Yeah, no. Come on, somebody praise him this morning. Even in the time of trouble, he is my all and all. But he can't be your all and all if you don't know him for yourself. This is a call to discipleship. If you don't know him, I want to introduce you to my Jesus, who is my all and all. If you want him to be your all in all, you need to believe that he is the Son of God. You need to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you shall be saved. Then you can call him your all in all. Because he will baptize you with fire. He will become the leader of your life. He will lead God, direct, and protect you. And that's why you can call him your all in all. Will there be one? The doors of the church is open. This is not a call for church membership. This is a call for you to get into a relationship with my Jesus that you can have him as your all in all will there be one if not is a call for church membership there might be someone here that is unchurched looking for a place where they can come and exercise their gifts and their talents for the uplifting of the kingdom of God I can tell you that this is a good place where you can learn, you can grow, and you can teach as we teach one another. The doors are open. This is your opportunity. Will there be one? If not, the invitation has been given. And the choice is always yours. Amen. Because I have a God that is my all in all. It's altar call. We don't come to the altar unless called. And then we gonna pray for the church. I'm going to pray the corporate prayer as you pray your individual prayer. And if we're all on one accord, the Lord will hear our call and answer our prayer. Father, Father, Again, we just come saying thank you. Lord, we know that there are many affirmities and problems within the church. We know there are those that are in the hospital, sick and at home, in the nursing home and all over that's a part of this branch of Zion, but also those that are scattered throughout the world. 
And Lord, right now we pray to you, ask you to touch them with a finger of love. Give them peace in the midst of all their trials, all their tribulation, all their pains. Um, but Lord, also those that are being treated with the, by the doctors and the nurses. Lord, we ask now that you touch the doctor and the nurses and the caregivers and, and to give them strength to do what only you can do and that you will lead God and direct them. You will open up their minds and their eyes and their hearts to let them know what it is these your people are in need of that they may treat them. Because, Lord, we want to bring them on back home. We want to, to bring them back into a right relationship with us that we can fellowship with one another. Though they may be going through, Lord, let them know that they are not forgotten. You are in everywhere, God, that you can be everywhere at the same time. So, Lord, right now I'm calling on your holy name just to be with them in all that they're going through right now. And above all, give them peace of mind. Give them peace in their heart. Yes, they may be going through the valley of the shadow of death, but we know that you're right there with them. There is no fear that they need to have if they just hold on to your unchanging hand. So, Lord, we're calling on you. We're calling on you to touch those and, and put a smile on their face. Give them joy bells in their heart, even though they might be going through some things right now. They might be going through bereavement, might be going through sickness, infirmities in the body, uh, things that's just not going right in their lives. And they are all confused and don't know which way to turn, Lord. We ask that you be there with them right now. Give them peace in the midst of all that's going on. And above all, Lord, we pray for New Bethlehem Baptist Church. Lord, we ask now that you would just allow that anointing to fall afresh, but not only upon the church, but upon all its members. Open their eyes and their hearts, O oh Lord, that you will come in and minister to them. Give them what they are in need of, so that they will have the joy of your salvation. Lord, we ask all these in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Now, Brother Gaston, Samuel, where are you at there, Sam? You hiding back there. Come on up. first got here he was but look at him now and he's getting ready to head off onto a program with Charleston College and he's going to be traveling around and, and we just want to ask the Lord to cover him and keep him in the midst of all his travel because we know that when you leave the comfort of your home that the that, 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 the, the Satan is going to come after you. All that we have taught him, and, and we've raised him up in the way that, that he should go, but yet the world has something else for him. So while he's out, we want to just ask the Lord to protect him. But Father, in the name of Jesus, we just want you to look in old, old Sam. Even though he's grown up, and he may look at himself as being a young man, but, Lord, in your eyesight, he is still young. Lead him, guide him, and direct him, oh, Lord. And when things come up against him and he don't understand, Lord, we, we know that you allowed your spirit to indwell within him. That bring back to his remembrance the things in which he was taught. That he may go in the path of righteousness. And, Lord, even if he stumble, Lord, we know that you are the righteous God that you are going to, if he just confess the wrongdoing, that, that you are going to lift him up and you're going to put him back on the straight and narrow path. He's been a good young man. He's been a faithful servant, oh Lord. And right now as he goes into the world, Lord, I'm asking that you put a hedge of protection round about him. 
keep him away from all hurt, harm, and danger, and that you will lead him on back to us in one piece. To have him with a knowledge that he can come back and share with us the things that he has learned of what to do and what not to do. So, Lord, we ask that you protect him, keep him in the midst of all his storms. This we ask your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We come to Brother Yes. He called and said his sister's in the hospital. She's on the ventilator. She's developed COVID. All types of things are going on right now, Lord. And Lord, because we know that you are the all-knowing God, you are the healer in the sick room. The doctor says a small percentage of chance of coming out. But God, we know that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above everything, anything that anyone could possibly do. And so we're calling on you, Lord. We're calling on you. He's standing in, in, in the gap for his sister, Lolita Scott, Lord. Lord, we're asking right now that you go look in in the hospital, that you touch her, oh Lord, in the midst of what's going on. She might be on a ventilator and hard to breathe on her own, but you gave us the breath of life. And because you gave us the breath of life, you can continue to allow her to breathe all by herself. Lord, you can, COVID might be dwelling and coming back again, but you got us through it once. You brought us through it twice. It might be coming again, but you know you said in your word that if we just wait on you, if we just be obedient to your word, that you will heal the land. So, Lord, we're asking on you to heal not only the land, but heal the sister. Lord, touch her from the top of her head down to the sole of her feet. Give us strength to hang on in there until a change comes. Because we know that the change is on the way. Because you are a change God. You are a good God. As we just finished singing, you are our all and our all. So, Lord, I ask now that you open up that anointing oil. Pour it up on her. Touch her with a finger of love. Get her up out of that bed and bring her on back home. Lord, because we know you are the God of all, that you are the one that can make everything all right. We ask this in all blessings in your son Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God is the joy, the strength of my life. He moves all pain, misery, and strife. He promised to keep me, never to leave me, never ever come short of his word. I've got to fast and pray, stay in the narrow way. I got to keep my life. Clean every day I want to go with him When he comes back Well I've come too far And I never turn back Oh God is Someone lift your hand and say God is God Whatever you need him to be, lift your voice and say, God is, God is my own. Somebody ought to tap your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, it won't always be like this because God is my own. God is my own. voice and testify and say God is God is my whole head, head. Oh. come on someone lift your hands lift your hands give him praise because you know God is your all in all don't worry about it because God is my all Oh, come on, 
somebody and praise him like you know he's working it out. Come on, somebody say God is working it out. Come on, somebody stand to your feet. Testify to somebody. Begin to praise him because God is working it out. I said, do you believe what I'm saying? God is working it out. He said, if you got faith, if you have faith and believe, you shall receive. Come on, somebody say, God is working it out. He's my all in all. He's food when I'm hungry. He's a doctor when I need him. He is a healer. He is a way maker. He is a provider. Someone lift your hand and say, He is my all. He is my all. Lift your hand and say, Yeah. Yeah. We don't stop. We keep on praying. We don't stop. We keep on praising him. We don't stop. We keep on worshiping him because he is God is my all. It's all right to lift your hands. It's all right to cry out to him. We don't know what we're going to face this week. We faced many things last week, but we don't know what's ahead of us this week. But I'm declaring that God is my all. all. One more time. God is my all. Come on, somebody, give him the highest praise. Come on, church, give him the highest praise. Come on, we believe in miracle signs and wonders. Hey, hey, come on, somebody, begin to praise him for the miracle that is about to take place. Somebody praise him for the blessing that is about to take place. Hey, hallelujah. Father, Father, because you are our all in all, all that we've asked for, Lord, we're going to count it as being done. As we stand down from this place, O oh Lord, that we'll never leave your presence. By the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, may he rule, rest, and abide with us now, henceforth, and forevermore. And let the church say amen, amen, go in peace.